Hello, I'm Dr. Moses. I'm here again with another lecture for MRCP patients. Even for MRCP one and two people, they want to listen. It will be of some benefit. So today's topic is rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, in clinical consultation station, there are certain topics which are extremely extremely important. Around twenty to thirty topics are there, and we are going to discuss all the topics with videos and how to approach. What are the questions that can be probably asked in these topics? All right, let's go ahead with rheumatoid arthritis. All right, have a typical case presence, a 52-year-old woman presence with a two-month history of bilateral hand and wrist pain and swelling in her fingers. She has also recently noted a similar pain in the balls of her feet. She finds it hard to get going in the morning and feels stiff for hours after waking up. Remember, this stiffness is a character of any inflammatory arthritis. She also complains of increasing fatigue and is unable to turn taps on and off or use a keyboard at work without a significant amount of pain in her hands. She denies any infections before or since her symptoms started. A typical inflammatory arthritis case. This is a rheumatoid arthritis. So. If they ask you, what are the etiology, family history, it increases the risk up to two to four fold. And the presence of some HLA and DRW4, very important. It's the more common in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Some other T-cell subsets and IL-6 promoter polymorphism in Asian population can increase the risk. And some environmental factors like smoking and overweight or obesity is associated with increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis. Here we go. So what are the key factors you will find in the history and examination? All right. You will find active symmetrical arthritis that is typically lasting for more than six weeks. Most common in age seen in the people who are 50 plus years of age. In female sex, it is more common. There will be joint pain, swelling, along with the joint stiffness, which can last for more than an hour. Swan neck deformity, botonious deformity, ulnar deviation. Don't worry, I'm going to show you the real patient pictures of all these things, okay? These are some of the key factors you can find. See, this is a hand of a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. This is an ulnar deviation. Can you see the botonious deformity here? All right, botonious deformity here, okay? And I'll show you in a much better picture. Also, you can find rheumatoid nodules, any vasculitic lesion. In lungs, you can find pleural effusion, fibrosis, basal pulmonary fibrosis, especially both in rheumatoid arthritis and as well as use of the old drug gold, which is not used nowadays. And apical pulmonary fibrosis also can be seen. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis due to methotrexate. This methotrexate can come in your communication scenarios also. All right, then your bronchiolitis obliterance, pleural thickening, and pulmonary nodules. All right, so now I'll just tell you how to examine a patient with any rheumatological condition, including rheumatoid arthritis. What are the steps you have to do? All right, first, always don't forget to place a pillow below the hands. Then the first thing is look, feel, and move, and always be gentle. Please ask. Hi, ma'am. I'm going to examine your hands. Is there any pain? Please let me know. First, look. Look at the dorsum of the hands. Look for swelling of the MCP, PIP, and any guttering in the interossi muscle, any subluxation or an ulnar deviation, any swan necking or a botonious deformity or zetham deformity. Please check. Check for any rashes, scars, dactylitis, which can be seen in psoriatic arthritis. See for them. Then see the palms. Turn the palms over. See for palmar erythema, any muscle wasting, any scars. Then ask the patient to show the elbow. See for any nodules, rheumatoid nodules, psoriatic plaques, gouty tophi, scars, or any bursitis. And then second, after looking, you're going to touch and feel. All right. Then palpate the MCP joint. Be gentle. Palpate the PAP joint. Be gentle. Check the risk for any tenderness. Check for swelling, any temperature. Feel the pulse then and there itself. All right, then move. Ask the patient to straighten the fingers fully. Ask them to do a prayer sign. 
a reverse prayer saying, ask them to pick up an object. Always it's wise to keep some pen in your pocket, like you can ask the patient to pick the pen and ask to oppose fingers to the thumb and ask to grip your fingers tight and squeeze it and make them to do a pincer grasp and make sure they cannot open it to see the strength. And, you know, and then offer to see blood pressure then and there itself, because suppose you're working at a mixed connective tissue disorder or maybe an SLE, scleroderma, blood pressure is extremely, extremely and extremely important. Then simultaneously check proximal muscle weakness, all right? From distal to proximal, these are the things you have to see. Then go ahead and examine the lymph nodes and thyroid gland as hypothyroidism is one of the feature of rheumatoid arthritis. And hypothyroidism also can occur and hypothyroidism can also occur as a part of autoimmune spectrum. Check for pallor, ictrus, and tongue for any discoloration, any oral source, and check for oral hygiene, all right? Oral hygiene, look behind the ears for any rashes. And especially look at the hairs as well to look out for any alopecia here because alopecia areata is an autoimmune syndrome. It can be associated with, you know, autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome along with rheumatoid arthritis. Check for psoriatic plaques, check for dandruff, then auscultate the basis, auscultate the lung apex, auscultate for loud P2 or other hot zone, then ask the patient to lay down, palpate the abdomen for splenomegaly, look at the legs for any pyoderma, gangrenosum or vasculitic rash, finally check for pedal edema. All these things you'll be able to do in five minutes if you keep practicing at least once or twice in a week Please do go and get some rheumatology case and practice in your hospital wherever you're working or wherever you are going as a clinical attachment or an observer for cases of such. All right. Next. Can you guess this? What is this? Of course, this is rheumatoid arthritis with all the good old deformities. This is a neutrophil. Maybe you can think of a neutrophenia. What is this? This is the right side. This is the left side. Left side, there is a mass. You can call it splenomegaly. All of you would have got it. This is your good old felty syndrome. Okay. Just a question between. So the next thing you need to know is what are the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis? This is a viva question that can be asked for you. Systemic, it can cause fever, lymph node enlargement, weight loss, fatigue. In skin, it can cause palmar erythema, rheumatoid nodules, vasculitis. Raynaud's phenomenon, pyoderma gangrenosum, ocular, it can cause scleral scleritis, keratoconjunctivitis, sicca, scleromalacia perforans, and musculoskeletal system osteoporosis. Cardiac, it can cause myriad of presentations, pericarditis, to your valve defects, to accelerated ischemic heart disease, which lead to heart failure. Lungs, we have seen already in gastrointestinal system, it can cause splenomegaly. In neurology, it can cause peripheral neuropathy, it can cause mononeuritis multiplex, carpal tunnel syndrome, spinal cord compression, and the most dreaded atlando axial joint subluxation. In hematology, it can cause your Felty syndrome, which you have seen, and renal glomerulonephritis. Also, it can cause secondary amyloidosis. All right. Now, can you guess what it is? rheumatoid arthritis and what you are seeing here in the x-ray anybody anybody i'll give you just 10 seconds right these are pulmonary nodules this is rheumatoid arthritis together it's called excellent yes you will tell this is kaplan syndrome all right Next about rheumatoid arthritis is one of the patient I had examined. You can see the splenic and photonious deformity, ulnar deviation. There is swelling of the joints in this lady. All right. This is another lady with rheumatoid arthritis. She has some rheumatoid nodules, which I wanted to show you this rheumatoid nodule. This is another lady with rheumatoid arthritis with eczematous lesion in the skin and see her toes. See her toes. All right. Now they will ask you, what is the criteria for diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis? 2020 ACR, ULR criteria is there. 
no one can remember all the scores and values for any criteria. At least remember this, joint involvement, serology, anti-CCP antibodies, three, acute phase reactants, CRP and ESR, four, duration of the symptoms. This is simple, right? Joint involvement, your serology that is anti-CCP antibodies, acute phase reactants, duration of the illness. Just remember this and remember the cutoff value more than six is definitive rheumatoid arthritis. All right, there is something called DAS-28 scoring system to see the disease activity, you know, and how the disease is affecting the day-to-day -day living. DAS is disease activity score. This is called your disease activity score. DAS-28, this is scoring system used for rheumatoid arthritis. They may ask you, are you aware of any scoring system, doctor? Okay, because recent basis examination, some candidates asked me, like they asked some viva on something called PROM in neurology. What is a PROM? PROM is nothing other than the patient-related outcome measure. They wanted you to tell about any Rankine index which we used in stroke, Rankine index and all those things. This is called patient-related outcome measure. Okay. What are the investigations? So any investigation in a patient's examination or anywhere, you have to justify that. So complete blood count, you'll find reduced hemoglobin, urine and electrolyte to see any renal involvement, ESR, CRP, LFT, you will find low albumin, rheumatoid factor positivity can be seen in 70 to 80% of the cases. It indicates severity. And extra articular manifestations also will be more severe in a patient who is having RF positivity. And anti-CCP is more specific. ANA is positive in about 30% of the patients. And X-ray in rheumatoid arthritis. Of course, in patients, they may not give you ask you X-ray, but they will ask you the X-ray findings. What are the things you will find? Periarticular osteopenia, very first thing. Symmetrical joint space loss. See the loss of joint space? Deformities can find the deformities, erosions, and soft tissue swelling or nodules. All these things you'll find in the case of a rheumatoid arthritis in x <coughs> I'm sorry. This is another x-ray demonstrating bony erosions, bone displacement. See here, rheumatoid bony erosions. All right. What are the other investigations you have to do? Obviously, you know, in cardiovascular system, you have to do ECG, you have to do an echocardiography, you have to, in respiratory, you have to check the SATs, ABG, chest X-ray, LFT, HRCT. In GA, you have to do ultrasound, OGD scopy, colonoscopy if needed, barium swallow if it is indicated. How do you manage? Management is very simple. You don't need to go and read any complex textbooks to know complex management. Make it simple because they have just five minutes to drill you or grill you for any viva questions. All right, case one. In case of a mild disease activity at the time of presentation and the patient is neither pregnant and non -planning, nor planning to get pregnant. So the drugs are HCQ, sulfasalazin, leflunamide and methotrexate. Please, you should know the adverse reactions of all these drugs. Plus, you can give corticosteroids or NSAIDs. Any one of this or two of this with corticosteroids and NSAIDs, you can escalate as the disease progresses. Case two, in case of a moderate to severe disease activity and the patient is neither pregnant nor planning to become pregnant. So again, the same set of drugs. Now here you can introduce the biologicals. Etanarcept, infliximab, adalimumab, septolizumab, abatacept, tozilizumab and bortezinib. With that, you can give some steroids and NSAIDs as well. In case of a pregnancy or someone planning for pregnancy, they can ask, so doctor, if this woman wants to become pregnant, what kind of drugs you will give? The safe drugs are prednisolone, HCQ, and sulfasalazine. These three drugs are the safest. All right. Now comes to complications. What are the complications that can occur in a case of a rheumatoid arthritis? It can cause a huge list of complications, starting from work disability. Many people require surgery for joints, carpal tunnel syndrome, Pelti syndrome, TNF-alpha related, uh, inhibitor related adverse effects, including adverse effect of all the drugs pulmonary complications, and always remember rheumatoid arthritis itself is an independent risk factor for ischemic heart disease. So do psoriatic arthritis. It itself is an independent risk factor for ischemic heart disease. And thank you so much. That ends our lecture in rheumatoid arthritis.
thank you so much for listening please like and subscribe please comment below if you need any lectures if you find some topics in paces a little difficult i'm more than happy to bring that lecture for you any cases which you haven't seen you want to see the videos you want to know how to examine the patients and what are the probable questions that has been asked i'm ready to bring it out for you absolutely free of cost and just wait and watch over for our website that's going to come up with a lot of podcast and a lot of free sessions for you all all right all the best thank you so much god bless you bye bye